from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. to Central and South America. Your part in the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Join us on Praise the Lord from New York City as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teaching to encourage and inspire and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. God bless you and welcome to Praise the Lord. I'm your host, Paul B. Mitchell. I'm so glad that you've tuned in to us today. I am excited about being here and I am excited about what God's going to do. I know that you're going to be blessed today. Now listen, it's no accident that we've tuned in to one another today. Uh, and I believe that the presence of the Lord is already here. Listen, the Bible says where two or three are gathered together. He said he is in the midst already. So God is here. And he said a threefold cord is not easily broken. Amen. Myself and our studio guests, we are one cord. God is the second cord and you are the third. So we're glad you're here. Sit where you are. Get comfortable. I believe God is going to bless us. Amen. Amen. Now, today I have with me Carl Saifu or Sifu. 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 Carl Romaine. He is the owner and master instructor, instructor at Edgewater Kung Fu Academy. He has studied and trained in Kung Fu since the age of 10. Wonderful. He's also the WAKO World Champion, and he has been inducted into the International Kung Fu Hall of Fame and the World Christian Martial Arts Champion, and he's with us today. Carl, welcome to Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Thank you First of all, let me, let me start by saying I feel safe. <laughs> I feel safe. Amen. <laughs> and I'm so blessed that, that God has all kinds in the body of Christ, in our family. I didn't even know I had a, a, a master, uh, a WAKO world champion in our family. If I ever run into problems, will, will, you, will you come help me out a little bit? Yes, sir, but, you know, God will help you first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, somebody's probably watching, and, and they're probably saying, yeah, but Pastor Mitch is right. Sometimes he doesn't come when we want him. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's his time, not ours. Amen. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here, and I'm so glad to have an opportunity to meet you, uh, my brother, and Thank it's a pleasure. How, how did you get saved? When, when, how did this happen? How did you get into the body of Christ? Tell us about you, it. You know, I've had an, an amazing life. Um, you know, I've been doing martial arts since age 10, so this year, actually next week, will be 36 years because I had begged my mom to enroll me in martial arts at, at age 10. And uh, so next week is my birthday. And uh, right. yeah, so 
So 36 years I've been doing the martial arts, but uh, my goal when I was a child was to become a world champion in the martial arts. I was just very passionate about it. My, my father had introduced me to it. All the kids in the, in the neighborhood had done it and everything else. And my instructor saw a lot of talent in me, so he tried to encourage me to continue the martial arts and train the martial arts, so I did. And by the time I was a senior in high school, I had to make some choices about life and what I wanted to do. And in my high school yearbook, I remember writing, I want to be a world champion by age 22. That's good. Now, you can imagine that there were a lot of people who didn't believe in me. There were a lot of people who thought, well, come on, really? You're going to do this? You know, I'm from a small town, and I grew up there, and I trained at a little local martial arts school. Like, how are you going to be a champion of the world? And I said, well, I just believe that I, I, I can be. You know, my instructor believes in me. and and. I have some talent, and so I graduated high school, I, I went off to California, I trained with a world champion out there, and I came back home, and I started training and competing, and I got ranked in the top 25 in, in locally, you know, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, tri-state area, and I was still pursuing my goal, and then one day I was driving across the Tappan Zee Bridge on my way to work. At that time, I was working in Westchester County, living in Rockland, and I got cut off by another driver, and my car, I lost control of my car, and my car spun out hit two lanes and I was injured. And the injuries that I received were to my spine. And so now, not only did I have other people not believe in me, then the doctor gives me the news that you will never be able to do, the, do martial arts again. So just give up on it right now. Yeah. And for a while I kind of took that in and I kind of believed him, but something in my spirit wasn't right. And, and I kept thinking, no, I, I can do this. I can do this, I have to do this, you know? And that, that number 22 kept ringing in my mind, in my, in my ears. And so I decided to make a comeback to my sport. And to make a long story short, I ended up becoming world champion by age wow. 22 for, for the WAKL. Wow. And, and with that, I lived my passion. From my passion, I found my purpose. And it was during that time that I got saved. And what I recognized was that, you know, you can have a passion for something, but it just because you're passionate about it, isn't, it doesn't define who you are as a person or define what it is you're supposed to do as a person. And one of the things I started to recognize was God saved me for a reason. And I started to impact people's lives through the message of my story. It gave them hope. It gave them inspiration. People who had given up on dreams and, and things that they maybe were supposed to do or born to do. Yes. See, when, when we live our dreams, we inspire the people around us. And I recognize that. And so that became my purpose. And, and from that point on, my whole life changed. This is what makes God so phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Because he, he will take the inequities of our own lives. He knows everything. Yes, sir. He's finished the story. The story, our story, all of our stories, it's finished. But he, he, he wrote into all of our stories some inequities mm -hmm. that... Uh, that we really don't like, you, you didn't like the accident, you, you, you didn't like being hurt, but yet he's used it. He designed the problem so that the problem, though it is a problem for you, it, it, it would bless somebody else. Yes, that brings me to something else, because now, now, now you're talking about pain has purpose. Yes, sir. All pain has a purpose. And, and that's amazing. Somebody's listening right now that that needs to hear that their pain has a purpose. I sincerely believe that the things we go through are not for us. Yes, sir. They're, they're for other people. Yeah, what I, kind I of believe that too, and, and that's one of the lessons that I've learned in my life, because, you know, having accomplished all that I've accomplished, yeah. people expect you then, you know, I've worked with the New York Giants football team, I've been on Oprah, Dr. Oz, um, and people think, like, your life is perfect. Nobody's life is perfect. No. You have ups, you have downs, you know, and sometimes we got to praise him when we're down, but we got to praise him when we're well, up too. and we got to be connected to God the whole time. And that's one of the lessons that I've learned. And even talking about how did I come to know God, I learn about God every single day based yes. on what he's doing in my life. You know, there's never a day that goes by that I don't know something more about him. Uh, you know, I know in relationships, they say, it doesn't matter how long you're with somebody, you're always learning more about them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I find my that's relationship right. with God is like. Being, being the champion must have taken a tremendous amount of discipline. How important is discipline to reaching our goals? Wow. It's the key. Because, because somebody's listening and say, wow, yeah. he's the champion. Yeah. And Lord, I, I want to be a champion in, in what I do. 
how how important is discipline for, for anyone to reach their goal, uh, to be a champion? I mean, discipline in anything you do is the key to being successful at, at, at anything, whether it's being a champion in life, whether it's strengthening your faith, whether it's just being a great parent. You know, that structure of doing something consistently all the time makes all the difference in the world in, in any result that you seek. I think we should back up and say that again. So the key, you're saying... Mm -hmm is the consistency the consistency doing doing things mm -hmm. consistently mm -hmm. think about it think about discipline and faith together right so here you are you're training every day and in your mind in your heart you hope to win right you pray that you win right but you don't know for sure that that's going to happen right but the discipline of doing it consistency is you living out your faith that you know i will succeed right so that's how i kind of look at it the, the, I call it the human responsibility yes, sir. in the divine apparatus of God's system of <laughs> blessing us. And many times we want God to make us all kinds of things, but we want him to do our part. <laughs> yeah, we got to do our part yeah, too. Yeah, we, we, have to, we do have to do our part. How do you integrate uh, your spiritual life into your work? God is first. You know, uh, I, I start my day with that, that. I have to connect with God no matter what I do. You know, whether I'm doing an interview, whether I'm teaching a class, whether I'm going to work with somebody or I'm speaking, God is always first. And he shows up constantly. You know, I had a young lady who came in. She's doing class with me, but we talk. And as we're talking, she's, she's telling me about a struggle that she was going through. And I said something to her, and she said, wow. And I said, what's the matter? She started crying. And as she's crying, she tells me, last night I prayed to God for an answer. You just answered that. And she said, I didn't know God until that conversation. I didn't have full faith. I, now I believe that God listens to me, hears my prayers, and answers my prayers. I mean, for me, that's like, wow. You know, how could I not feel connected to God? How could God not be a part of everything that I'm doing every single day? I think it's so important. That, that's important. I'll tell you the thing that blesses me. And, and uh, we were talking about a little bit earlier that it's just, it blesses me so much personally to see how God is just working in everyone's life and not just my little life. Yes, sir. And how you're, you're the W-A-K-O yes, world champion. And, 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 and I'm a pastor. Yes, sir. So I'm expected to pray. I'm, I'm expected to be in consecration. I'm expected to fast. I'm expected to be in... Exa I, there are certain things that are expected. So people expect certain things from me, from a position of righteousness. It's just so wonderful to see that I'm not the only one that need to be disciplined to be successful in what I do, that y you're the WAKO champion, world champion, and, and you have to be disciplined also in your spiritual walk. Yes, sir, all faith. the time. Praying, how important is that? Oh, very important. Number one on my list. You know, it, it is one of the ways that I connect to God. You know, another way for me to connect to God is actually through music. I, I find that I'm very blessed through music. Uh, I think everybody connects to God in their own way. Um, I do pray is the first thing I do. But when I, I listen to the message on the radio, and sometimes I'm praying about something and a song will come on. You know, and I can remember I was about to go to California and do this talk. And there's a song called Live Like That, you know, and, it, and the words are sometimes I think, what will people say of me when I'm only just a memory, when I'm home where my soul belongs? Was I loved? Was I Jesus to the least of us? Good. You know, and it's like, wow, yeah, you know, what's my message? You know, do I live like that? Will I bless people through my message, through my work, through what I do today? every day that I'm here for the time that I am given. The culture we live in now is moving away from spirituality. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's almost the norm now to not believe in God. Mm -hmm. The world is anti, so anti-Christ. Mm -hmm. your, your connection spiritually to God you said is important. Yes, sir. Okay. Tell us, besides prayer, what are some other things that you do to stay connected? Do you, do you go to church? Are you connected to a ministry? Uh, are you helping uh, any types of, any kind of groups? Do you pray for people? To, do you visit the sick and church? Is there I, anything I that you do to stay connected? I pray for people, but the other thing that I do is I keep godly people around me. I ask them to pray for me all the time, and I pray for them all the time. Yeah. 
you know, I, I think it's important to remember that we are part of a larger family, you know? I mean, and, and that's a great gift. You know, there are times when I'm weak and I need somebody else to be strong for me. You know, it doesn't matter what I do for a living or how people perceive me as a champion. I mean, I'm human, I'm a person, right? And so in those moments when I'm weak, I need to be reminded how to be strong. You know, so if I reach out to a brother or sister in Christ and they pray for me, you know, or they talk to me and encourage me or inspire me, it makes such a difference to me. You know, it really helps me to not only stay connected, but to be stronger, to recommit myself to my faith. You know, for me, my faith has been a personal journey. You know, there's been times in my life where I've been so connected to God and so strong in my faith and times when I've turned away and given up and said, oh, God, you're not here. You're not with yeah, me. Yeah. But then I turn around and I recognize it's not him that turned away. Right. It's me. That's right. I've the one, I'm the one that's yeah. turned away. And so, you know, every day, is, uh, you, every day I have to commit myself to committing to my relationship with the Lord. That's important. That's important. Are you connected to a ministry? Uh, yes, sir. You are? Yes, sir. Uh, God has been certainly good to you because you are the champion. Yes, sir. And I'm not going to get off of that. <laughs> yes, sir. Champion. Is there any other ways that God has been, been so powerful in your life? He's been powerful in this area. You're the world champion. Mm -hmm. People say, okay, he's the world champion. What else has God done for you? You know, I was sitting in the green room at the Oprah show. I was with uh, Dr. Oz. I was his guest to be on the show. And it was one of those moments where you look back over your life and you could see how God has shown up in everything. I'm a, I'm a son of an immigrant. You know, I immigrated here with my parents when I was two years old. I started Kung Fu at the local YMCA. And then from there, you know, I decided to be a, a champion. I have this accident. I end up being a champ. And all kinds of amazing things happen in my life. I've worked with the New York Giants, like I said. And all of a sudden I'm in the green room at Oprah and I'm with Dr. Oz and it's like, wow, you know, like, is this, is this really happening? You know, and so many times when I've thought that I've been defeated, so many times when I thought that life wasn't going to work out, so many times when I've been at the top or way at the bottom, broken and everything else, God shows up. And when he shows up, he does these miraculous things that are not of my doing because they're out of my control. You know, it's out of my yes, control. Yes, Who he yes. brings into my life, I cannot control. But he brings amazing people into my life and gives me amazing opportunities, and I continue to grow and, and be able to share my story. I asked you that question for a reason. Yes, sir. Sometimes we only tend to see God in one area of our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, he's made me the world champion. But I'm glad you said what you just said because you've also seen God show up in other areas of your life. All the time. I, I know in my own personal life, I've watched God show up in, in many different areas. And I think it's so important. Somebody's watching right now that needs to hear that the same God that helped them and showed up in one area of their life will, will show up and help them in any other area of their lives that they ask him to show up in. I think many times God don't show up in other areas of our lives because we don't let him into those areas. Truth, we don't trust him. Well, truth we be told. We need to trust him. Truth be told, we trust God in certain areas. Yes, sir. But in other areas, we rely on our own strength and confidence, and you, you, you know what I'm saying. Yes, sir. And the reason I ask that question is because I want somebody to understand that's watching us today that God can show up in every area of our lives and fix us everywhere we hurt. Yes, sir. And be there for us everywhere, everywhere that we have a problem. Mm -hmm. that, that's very, very important. Yeah. What's next for you? Wow. Um, I just did some more work with Dr. Oz, so I'll be on there uh, pretty soon. Um, I have some different events coming up where I'll be speaking to youth in particularly uh, about uh, childhood obesity um, as well as bullying, you know, because that is a very big issue right now in our communities. Uh, so in everything I do, like I said, I think the biggest thing for me is learning how to trust God every day, you know, staying connected to him, walking with him, and as I continue to reach more lives and hopefully save more lives and bring them to, to God, uh, I just want to keep doing the best that I can and be open to his will and not necessarily what I want, but whatever he wants for me. 
So his will is important in your life? Yes, sir. Would you say that he, he's, he's leading you the way he... Always. <laughs> always. Uh, that's always. Important. Even leading me here. <laughs> he's leading, always. And he's leading right now. Yes, sir. He's leading right now. If, if God is leading us, and, and he is, why don't we follow? Because we, he's given us free will, and sometimes we're stubborn, and sometimes we believe our own press clippings. You know, as an athlete, you know, it's an amazing thing to be an athlete. When you travel, you know, I was in Italy doing a 13-city tour, and you're almost larger than life. You know, you're in these standing room only events, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 people, everybody's cheering your name, people are coming up, they're crying, sign my, sign my picture, sign this, sign that. And it's so easy to fall into this trap where you start to believe, oh, I can do this myself. Look, I've arrived, I'm, mm -hmm. I got this. You know, until you find yourself in that place where no, you don't have this, and there's nothing that you can do. And in that moment, what will you do? Where will you turn? Amen, that is true. What's been the high point for you in terms of accomplishments? You've been on Oprah and national television. Being a parent. Okay. Being a parent. I was at my daughter's school last night, and um, wow, it's emotional. I was at my daughter's school last night, and she, in her... Um, language arts class, mm. she had a, a notebook and the kids were, were asked to leave a note for their parents there. And uh, so her mom was sitting in the, in the seat here and I was sitting here, so her mom actually had the notebook. And when her mom looked at the book, on the outside, my daughter loves animals. So she had all these pictures of all these animals on the outside. And the one picture she had, she had out, other, other than animals, was a picture of me. Wow. <laughs> I was just, I, you know, it touches you, wow. you know, moves you. Edgewater Kung Fu, you've owned that for how long? Uh, 10 and, years and now. where did it originate? Okay, so my original school was in Nyack. Um, and uh, that was over 21, 22 years ago. Uh, we had that school for a long time. You've owned that school for 22 years? Yeah, but I sold it you a sold while it. ago, yes. Mm -hmm. um, we actually started out with the one school in Nyack and we built that to four schools. And then uh, I sold three and kept the one, just Edgewater, because that was the one that was closest to where I live and in my community. Awesome. So that one school blossomed into four eventually? Yes, sir. That's interesting. <laughs> and then you sold the three and kept the one? Yes, sir. Why'd you sell the three? You know, uh, there it? were some people who were in my life at the time that needed opportunities. And, you know, I had been blessed so much, I felt like it was the right thing to do. Um, so I gave them an opportunity to to have their own business, you know? I mean, I've been given a lot to share a lot, right? To whom much is given, much is expected. And that's what I wanted to do at the time. And I also wanted to explore other avenues, which I've done. I've been an author writing books, and that's been an interesting challenge, you know? Speaking publicly and working with people that way, that's, that's also added to the different things that I do. Wow, that is awesome. Sifu Carl Romain, would you pray and ask God just to fortify people for the journey that they have to take to get to the destiny that he has designed for them. Would you pray and do that? Yes, sir. Let's do that. Father God, I wanna, I wanna thank you for this time that, that we are here, that we are sharing with all those who are watching us. You know, sometimes, Father God, the road is, it's unclear for us, we're not sure where you want to lead us or where our lives are going. And we want to take control because we're afraid. Father God, we need to know that we have to trust you, that we have to believe in you, that, that we have to know that you are going to lead us in the direction that you want our lives to go, that you're going to lead us in the direction that is best for us, Father. It's not about what we are and who we are and what we think we should be doing. Help us, Father, to trust you, to believe in you, to know that, that you got this and that you just need us to step up and do our part yes. once our part is revealed yes. to us. So, Father God, if there's somebody watching right now who's desperately seeking you, I ask that they feel your presence right now, that you touch their lives like you've touched mine, like you've touched so many lives, Father. And I ask, Father, that they will find peace, yes. that they will be in understanding that they receive, Father, that you will give them the wisdom, Father, that you will 
give them comfort in their trials, that they will know that their life doesn't have to be perfect, that they will know that you accept them just the way they are, and it doesn't matter who they are and what they've done, that you will lead them, you will take care of them, yes. and you will help them yes. to help others. Yes. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sifu Carl Romain. Thank you for being on the Praise the Lord Thank program you, today. It's a pleasure. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm sure you were blessed by that. You can see how God has been good in so many different people's lives today. And, and, I, and I want to encourage you. He that has begun a good work in you, he shall also perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Todd Dunnelly is coming to minister to us right now. And he's going to sing a song entitled, My Everything. 